It's a new year and Google's come out swinging with a major design change across the entire Pixel 9 lineup. And the Pixel 9 Pro Fold represents the biggest of them all. Gone is the short, stout, passport-like design of the original Pixel Fold to a taller, slimmer, and thinner design. A big change for sure, but those changes aren't just skin deep. There's some major changes on the inside as well. I'm on record saying the Pixel Fold was my favorite phone of 2023. So you know, I was disappointed when the rumors leaked about Google moving away from the design of the original Pixel Fold. But in my time with the Pixel 9 Pro Fold, all those changes have made a huge impact on my experience with the Pixel Foldable. And we need to talk about it. First off, when I thought about pre-ordering this device, I was going into it from the perspective of a happy Pixel Fold owner. There were a couple of things I wanted to see addressed, but I would have been good without design changes. I watched the Made by Google event and it got me a little excited, but I still had some disappointment about the design changes. But then it got here and I started using it. And I gotta tell you, they got a lot right. So let's just jump into what they got right and then later we'll talk about what they didn't get right and can do better for the next generation Pixel Foldable. First thing they got right, the new design. Google has done an amazing job with the new designs, materials, and build quality of the Pixel 9 series this year. All of the devices feel premium with top-notch materials. I still love the look and feel of the original Pixel Fold. And you can argue either way about which is a better looking device. But to me, the design improvements of the Pixel 9 Pro Fold are substantial. Once you hold a device in your hand, you begin to understand why Google did what they did. The new device has a sleeker, more modern design, even with its massive camera bump. Google has addressed many areas of needed improvement, which I noted in my Pixel Fold one year review. One of the main pain points of the Pixel Fold was its heft. It was the heaviest of all foldables last year. The 9 Pro Fold is almost 30 grams lighter, 16 millimeters taller, 1.6 millimeters thinner, 2.6 millimeters narrower. Now that might not sound like a lot, but with a thinner build and with it being slightly taller, that weight distribution makes it feel much lighter. In turn, the device feels more comfortable to hold and you experience way less hand fatigue. Also, Going of the rounded glossy sides and hinge of the old fold, the sides are now flat with a matte finish, which is less slippery and adds to the new modern look and feel. Google designers have shared that the decision to make those design changes were based on studies of how people use the Pixel Fold and other foldables. Per those studies, people prefer having the feel and functionality of a normal phone when the device is closed. And then for those specific times, when they wanna take advantage of the larger tablet sized eight inch display, they can unfold and be immersed in that experience. Whether it's for productivity, like multitasking, banking apps, taking notes while video conferencing, watching YouTube, Netflix, or gaming. So with the taller 6.3 inch cover display and with the incredible thinness, they achieved that goal of it feeling like a normal phone when closed. And despite the height increase, I wouldn't really consider it a large phone. It uses the same display as the Pixel 9, so it's roughly the same size as the Pixel 9 and smaller Pixel 9 Pro. The larger phones like the OnePlus 12 and the Pixel 8 Pro still tower over the 9 Pro Fold, and slimming it down leaves it very close to the thinness of those devices which is a big win for Google's design team. This makes the device much more approachable for the normal smartphone user, price withstanding. And I can't forget about the hinge. I was one of the few that didn't complain much about the hinge on the original Pixel Fold, but there's no denying that the hinge on the 9 Pro Fold has been greatly improved. It opens completely flat without any additional force but retains the same tension needed to hold that larger eight inch display at different postures, just like the original fold was known for. While we're on the subject of displays, 
that's another thing that they got right. As I mentioned earlier, the new generation comes with larger screens all the way around. The outer display goes from 5.8 inches to 6.3 inches. The inner display goes from 7.6 to 8 inches. These new displays are just better, a huge improvement in every way. You may feel differently to some degree if you prefer the size and aspect ratio of the original Pixel Fold. But strictly hardware wise, these displays completely outclass the ones on the first gen. They're brighter with a 2700 nits peak brightness with better viewing angles and much easier to read in bright sunlight. I think the 6.3 inch cover display achieves a nice balance of not being too large for most. So the size increase works and my concerns ended up being unwarranted. Plus, despite both screens being larger than the originals, I've noticed improvements on the power consumption side of things. I'll touch more on that later. They've also improved the crease on the inner display. It's less pronounced compared to the original. But as I mentioned before, if you were hoping for the crease to be eliminated, that just ain't happening. Creases aren't going anywhere on foldables. So if you've been waiting for that before buying a foldable, then you'll be waiting for quite some time. The larger eight inch display is so immersive and wonderful to use. How can you not like that display? Plus it's lighter. It makes watching video content a joy and multitasking a breeze. While we're on the topic of multitasking, let's get into the next thing they got right. Performance. When we talk about pixels, typically I tell people, throw specs out the window. I said it when I reviewed the original Pixel Fold. Benchmarks are overblown. Yeah, if you perform benchmarks, the raw numbers will show that the latest and greatest Qualcomm processors beat the Tensor G4. Because the first generation Pixel Fold launched with the older Tensor G2, the 9 Pro Fold is not your typical year over year upgrade. Skipping a generation from the Tensor G2 to the G4. And if you run benchmarks comparing the Tensor G2 to the G4, you will see the G4 soundly beats the G2 in the original fold. But these are pixels. In normal use, they're buttery smooth. You'd be hard pressed to tell the difference. We moved from 12 gigs of RAM to 16 gigs of RAM, which is a nice upgrade, especially considering all the new AI features announced during the launch. Not to mention the AI features Google will be bringing to the devices in the future. So that extra four gig of RAM will be helpful down the line. And to round things out, we have the same 256 gig and 512 gig storage options. Now, for those of you out there who value gaming, as I've said in previous videos, if you're a gamer, you've probably already done your research and made up your mind on the best device for you. But the majority of games will play just fine. Maybe the Qualcomm devices will run them slightly better, but that's never been a big deal to me. I'm not a major gamer, and the typical smartphone user will not have an issue with performance. While we're on the topic of gaming, this is one area where you see the advantage of the Tensor G4 over the G2. It's a much more efficient chip. And to top that off, there is now a vapor chamber on the Pixel 9 Pro phones for improved thermal management. So the device doesn't get nearly as warm under load. Another benefit of the chipset this year is that the Tensor G4 is paired with a new cellular radio. And that upgrade is noticeable. Reception has markedly improved. That improvement in turn has also contributed to improved battery life. Because with previous generation pixels, the battery drain was more noticeable when not on Wi-Fi. I'm definitely not experiencing that this go round. Let's talk about the cameras because they got these right too. But there's a bit of controversy surrounding the cameras here. This year, Google added the Pro moniker to its foldables meaning you would expect to get the same cameras and all the features of the other Pro models in the Pixel lineup, especially considering that large camera bump. Google engineers say it had to be designed this way to achieve the new thinner dimensions and still fit a large battery. 
yet the battery has decreased in size. More on that later. With all that said, we have to remember, this is a foldable, and each half of the folding phone is about half the size of a normal slab smartphone. That means there's limitations to deal with. So even though at a quick glance, the camera specs don't seem to have changed much from the original Pixel Fold, if you take a closer look, there are improvements. The main sensor is still a 48 megapixel sensor. The ultra wide is a new 10.5 megapixel with autofocus and a wider 127 degree field of view with added macro focus, which is only featured on the Pixel Pro phones. The telephoto camera is the same 10.8 megapixel count, but with newer sensor with a wider field of view and better zoom. The selfie cameras are improved to jump into 10 megapixels for both the cover display and the inner display modules. And now both work for unlocking your devices, as well as for authenticating banking apps and other secure apps. Now that we've run through the camera specs, let me say this, don't worry about the specs and forget your concerns about these cameras. These are still great cameras especially for the normal smartphone user who just wants to pull out their phone and just point and shoot. Google's image processing does wonders. And unless you're a camera enthusiast or a professional photographer, the results of the images from this camera won't disappoint. But for those of you who want some more control over your photo taking adventures, we now get the suite of Pro controls that have been on the Pro phones and not available on the original Pixel Fold. Foldable camera features that carry over from the first gen are dual screen preview, rear camera selfie. New camera features include Add Me, Made You Look, Audio Magic Eraser, and Macro Focus Video. Here are some shots compared to the Pixel Fold and last year's flagship Pixel 8 Pro. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Surprisingly, another area they got right this year has been the battery life. As I alluded to earlier, the battery has decreased in size. So if we just go by the specs, you would assume that battery life could be compromised. Initially during my first week, battery life was inconsistent. So I wasn't too optimistic. However, when I hit my second week, I was pleasantly surprised. It took about a week to adapt to how I use my phone. Since then, I haven't gone a day where I have to top up before bedtime. A big improvement from what I was used to with the original Pixel Fold. Despite the battery size decreasing from roughly 4,800 milliamps to 4,650 milliamps, battery life has been very solid. This was one of the key areas I mentioned needed to be improved in my Pixel Fold one year later review. I'm no longer reaching for a charger in the middle of the day. The device regularly gets me through a full day with five to seven hours of screen on time, depending on what I was doing that day. No doubt, Another benefit of the more efficient Tensor G4 processor. But I must mention, there hasn't been a huge improvement on the fast charging situation here. We still have the same 21 watt wire charging and the same wireless charging speeds as last year. The chipset, along with a slightly smaller battery, doesn't prove how long it takes to charge because the chipset does not get as warm as the G2. There's no throttling when charging due to heat. Let's get into the software. This is Google's strength, so you know they got this right. This year, surprisingly, Google pushed up the Pixel 9 series launches to beat Apple to the punch. Because of this, they didn't launch with the next release of Android, as is the tradition with new Pixel device launches. So we get Android 14 out of the box. The software experience has been quite good. The typical Pixel smoothness is here with no major bugs or anything that will hamper the usability of the device out the box. We can probably attribute that to it using the mature version of Android 14. We'll see if the bug-free experience remains once Android 15 is pushed to devices. 
and all the core pixel features are here. As I like to say, the pixel dust is sprinkled all throughout the software experience. You can't talk about this year's pixel devices without talking about AI. Like it or not, AI features abound this year. Features like call summary, add me, pixel screenshots, call notes, magic editor, reimagine, and Gemini Live. What do you think about the New York Knicks and their offseason moves this year? The Knicks made a big splash this offseason. Trading for Macau Bridges gives them another great wing defender. With all that said, AI isn't the main reason anyone would buy this phone. Yes, they're cool features to play with, and I'm sure more useful AI features will come down the line, but nothing game-changing is on that front yet. With all the love I'm giving the Pixel 9 Pro Fold, if I'm being real, it's not perfect. It has its little quirks. We have to get into what they didn't get right, what needs to be improved on the next-gen Pixel Foldable. Although they've addressed a number of areas that needed improving on the previous generation, there are still things that haven't really improved. Some can be addressed via software updates, maybe a future Pixel feature drop. Others are hardware related that carry over from the previous gen. And then others are things that are related to the new device hardware. Charging is still slower than I'd like it to be. Although it does charge faster than last year's model, it's still slow compared to many other new smartphones. More advanced multitasking options. The Z Fold 6 and the OnePlus Open offer more flexibility when it comes to multitasking. I hope we see a Pixel feature drop in the future addressing this. To me, that was a miss. This release was the time to address that. Third, the lack of stylus support. Another miss by Google. Right now, only the Galaxy Z Fold 6 has stylus support. With such a large inner display, that stylus would make this device perfect for artists and other creatives. Fourth, them bezels on the cover display. I get it, they wanted to use the same displays from the Pixel 9, but because they decided on the eight inch inner display, each half is larger when folded, which means the cover display area can house a larger display. That's also why there's some extra space between the hinge area and the screen. Google, next year, please fill out the bezels with the larger cover display. Despite those shortcomings, the hardware is the true star of the party this year. That's the case with the entire Pixel 9 lineup. Google really killed it this year. And with the 9 Pro Fold, there are improvements in almost every category. Those big, bold, beautiful displays, the new lighter, thinner build quality, improved cameras, the more efficient and less power hungry Tensor G4 chipset, better cellular connectivity, much improved battery life. So as skeptical as I was before receiving my Pixel 9 Pro Fold and not being happy about the change in dimensions and aspect ratios, I have to admit, this device is better in practically every way. Now for the big question. If you're a Pixel Fold owner, is this a must upgrade? I said in my last Pixel Fold video that it was still a great device and it wasn't a must upgrade. But I have to say, now after owning the Pixel 9 Pro Fold, this is one of the biggest generation to generation upgrades I've seen in quite some time. The improvements are substantial. So if you're able to grab a Pixel 9 Pro Fold on a great deal, or still able to cash in on a great trade-in offer for your original fold to jump into this, it's worth considering. I think you'll be very happy. But what about the competition? How does it stack up? Here in the US, we don't have many options. In the carrier stores, we have the Z Fold 6 and the 9 Pro Fold. Online, we also have access to the OnePlus Open. All three are great in their own ways and have their own advantages over the others. With the Z Fold 6, you have the Samsung One UI feature set with stylus support that provides access to many of the features people loved on the Galaxy Note series. But what's held it back, other than price, is that when it's closed, it doesn't quite feel like a normal phone. It's thicker and has a narrow outer display that feels cramped when typing. The OnePlus Open, on the other hand, is a year old 
but still has great hardware. It feels like Google used the OnePlus Open as its hardware template and just improved upon it. The OnePlus Open is similarly designed, meaning that it's fashioned to feel like a, a normal smartphone when closed with the same 6.3 inch size cover display and similar aspect ratio. Although thicker, it is still lighter than the 9 Pro Fold. Where the OnePlus Open excels compared to the other two are with its advanced multitasking features and its open canvas software. However, its Oxygen OS has its quirks and isn't quite as polished as the Pixel UI and Samsung's One UI. With that said, I find the Pixel 9 Pro Fold the most well-rounded of the three foldables. Google has taken a big step towards being the gold standard for foldables here in the US. Having said that, if you own the original Pixel Fold, are you thinking about upgrading? Or if you're in the market for a foldable, what are your thoughts? Which foldables are you considering? I know folks outside the US have many more great options, but here in the US, we're limited. Well, if you've enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please smash that like, subscribe, and notification icon to be notified when I drop another video. Oh, and please remember, spread love, positivity, and be helpful in some way in the world today. I'll see you in the next one. I'm out.